Hi, I'm Corinne, and I'm a scientist at Oberlin College, and today we're going to be talking about the deep sea. Have you ever wondered how creatures in the ocean differ from us creatures on land? And have you ever wondered how they can dive so deep that light from the sun doesn't even reach them, and yet still be able to survive? Most animals who go in the deep sea are fish, meaning that they have gills and they're able to get oxygen from the water itself. But some animals, like whales, are mammals like us, and they need to breathe air. However, whales still go super deep in the ocean. They can go the length of 5.5 football fields down underwater. Try to imagine running across a football field 29 times while holding your breath for 137.5 minutes. This is the longest dive that we have on record, and this was performed by a beaked whale. You may think that a whale can hold its breath longer than humans because it has larger lungs, but this actually isn't true. While whales do technically have larger lungs, the fact that they can hold their breath for so much longer has more to do with their body size than their lung size. When creatures are really big, they're able to carry more oxygen in their blood. Whales, proportionally, can carry about twice the amount of oxygen in their blood compared to us. So they don't actually need bigger lungs to keep more oxygen. Also, it turns out that bigger animals actually don't need as much oxygen proportionately. So they're able to chill at the bottom of the ocean for a really long time and they don't need that oxygen yet. Another reason why whales can hold their breath so long is that their lungs are structured differently from human lungs. They're actually able to essentially compress all the wet. You see, lungs are essentially sacks of air and when humans breathe, the sac opens up a little bit and then closes back up a little bit. Essentially, there's only about 10 to 15 percent of the lungs are being filled with oxygen as we breathe in. In comparison with whales, about 80 to 90 percent of the lungs are being filled with oxygen. This means that every breath that a whale takes gives it a lot of oxygen to be able to survive in deep areas. But another thing is that Actually, because of how humans' lungs work, if we were to be in the deep sea, we wouldn't necessarily survive. That's because there's a lot of water pressure in the deep sea. And this water is literally the force of all of the water above you pushing down on you. And since lungs are essentially sacks of air, they could, well, pop, basically. But for whales, that doesn't happen because the sacks of air, aka their lungs, aren't filled with air. So they're already squished so they can survive. Now you may be asking me, Corinne, plenty of humans go deep underwater, but they don't get squished, or at least I've never seen one get squished. How do they do that? So I'm going to turn this over to our diving expert, Neil, who can tell you all about scuba diving. Hey everyone, my name is Neil and I'm a writer for the Discover Crew. I'm also a certified scuba diver. Now my friend Corinne just talked about some amazing adaptations that whales have to help them survive in the deep sea. Well, believe it or not, humans have done a pretty good job copying these aquatic animals so that we can explore underwater too. Today, I'd like to show you some of my scuba gear and talk about how the equipment we use mimics the body parts of sea animals. First off, let's talk about the most important piece of scuba equipment, the air tank. While whales can hold a large amount of oxygen in their blood, humans cannot. That's why divers rely on our air tanks for long dives underwater. The tanks hold about an hour's supply of air under pressure so that we can replenish the oxygen in our blood. Unfortunately, I don't have the air tanks I use with me right now. 
They're actually back at the dive shop where I got them filled up. So we're gonna pretend for a minute that this empty water bottle here is my air tank. Now connected to the nozzle of the air tank is the regulator right here, which is a piece of equipment that supplies air to the mouthpiece right here for breathing and here to the BC or buoyancy compensator. Now the BC is a vest that helps me float. Uh, it's similar to the air bladders that help certain kinds of jellyfish float on the surface. By pressing the button on the valve here, uh, I can inflate my BC in the water so I don't sink. And on my person right now is my wetsuit. The ocean tends to be pretty cold and the water takes away heat from your body a lot faster than air. So scuba divers use wetsuits to stay warm. The wetsuit is kind of like the layers of fat on a whale called blubber, which help them conserve body heat. Similarly, a wetsuit actually traps a thin layer of water in the fabric, which warms up the diver's body and insulates the diver from the cold. Another type of fascinating creature that exists in the deep sea are jellyfish. Now, jellyfish don't breathe air. They're not mammals like we are. They get their oxygen from the water surrounding them. And they're essentially just little blobs of jelly-like substance just moving throughout the deep sea. But they still do have some very cool properties. One of them being bioluminescence. So some creatures in the deep sea actually want to be seen, but there isn't any light from the sun that allows them to be seen. So how do they do this? And the answer is that they make their own light. This glowing jellyfish looks really cool and has actually been used many times throughout the years after its discovery. You see, this particular jellyfish is actually clear in color, but when it gets angry, it lights up a greenish blue. Can you imagine lighting up when you get angry? I'd love to do that. It's able to do this because it has organs on the outside of its bell, which is kind of like the main structure of a jellyfish, that allow it to glow. These organs produce proteins. Now the proteins have two different parts to it. One is essentially the glowing proteins, the ones that actually emit the light, and another is a little barrel-shaped protein that protects it. Now the glowing proteins are very delicate, and so they actually can't really interact with things outside of their little barrel. And so you would think that because it's surrounded by a little barrel, then you wouldn't be able to see it, but this barrel has little tiny holes in it so that nothing bad can get to this glowing protein, but the light can also still emit. These particular jellyfish live off the coast of Vancouver to Central California. Now, when scientists found out that these jellyfish could glow all on their own, they actually used this glowing in their own experiments. They were able to replicate these proteins in other animals, and they were even able to change the color of the glow. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Join our community and share tips and ideas by following the link to the, the website, which is below. Bye crew, see you next time.